What is up guys, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark and today we're covering some more r slash am I the butthole. If you want to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description below and along the timeline. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe and maybe that notification bell too. And don't forget you can follow us on podcast now so you can take us wherever you go. You can also join the channel either through YouTube membership or head on over to Patreon. And a huge thank you to each and every single one of you for being here every day, watching my videos, commenting, liking, all that good stuff. It really does mean the world to me. Thank you so, so much. And with that being said, let's get in to today's stories. Much love, guys. Our first story comes from Crustacean. Would I be the arsehole if I tell my mother I don't go to Costco with her because she's a Karen? <laughs> I, 22, live with my parents right now. My mother is horribly entitled and narcissistic and absolutely loves Costco. Back in early June, I made the mistake of going to Costco with her. When we were there, I was horrified by her behavior, constantly nitpicking every little thing to any nearby staff, complaining during COVID knolls that they didn't have free samples, etc. The worst, however, was when we were already paid and we were in line to get our bags checked to leave. The line was a total of two minutes, but that was too much. 10 seconds into being there, she literally started screaming at an employee at the membership desk from her place in line, mind you, across the way, about how that guy works in customer service and therefore needs to fix it. She even demanded his other nearby employees' names, threatened to call corporate and threatened to make the initial guy pay for the entire purchase because her frozens were melting. I was so horrified slash ashamed slash embarrassed that I actually apologized for her right then and there and did my best to get through the line. In the car, I mentioned that her behavior was way out of line. She literally couldn't process that she was in the wrong. So I quietly vowed to never go to Costco with her again. It's been two months now and she's been starting to figure out after constantly asking me to go with her and me downright refusing under any circumstance. She's now asking me why I won't go with her and I can't hide it anymore because I go with my dad. Would I be the asshole if I tell her that a terminal case of Karen is the reason I won't go to Costco with her anymore? Note, I would not phrase it as your terminal case of Karen. I'll choose better words. <laughs> Extra important info. My father has asked me to try and keep quiet about this issue around her to reduce stress in the house. Every day there is an issue and every day we are expected to quietly deal with it because the result of confrontation is verbal abuse. I've been keeping quiet to keep peace. Edit. Fuck, this got upvoted a lot. I've been doing my best to read everything. I did receive several links slash copy paste of Don't Rock the Boat. I've also received the other subs such as r slash raised by narcissists. Thank you. Additional information slash FHQ. Number one, we believe she is mentally ill. My guess is schizophrenia because she is so incapable of understanding what is really going on. Two, the last time we had a huge confrontation with her about things, I was in high school. She was in denial and it was completely unsuccessful. She refused therapy, claimed I was just jealous of her and it went all wrong. That's why my dad wants us to be quiet. Three, I'd show a video of someone else, but I genuinely think that unless she is on the video, she won't even snap to it. Four, we're actually having a behavior talk with her sometime today because she's gotten particularly out of hand lately. Five, I'm working on moving out. I wasn't supposed to be here, but neither was COVID. I'm trying to find a job. My dad will help me move into an apartment as soon as that happens. Unfortunately, it's difficult to find work right now. Six, I live in the US. I'm sorry I don't write like I do. Seven, I cannot stress enough. I will not call her Karen when I confront her. Thank you to everyone's love and support. Maybe I'll give an update once we talk to her. And I would love to hear that update. And like you said towards the end, I think a sit down and talk to her and let her know her behavior is unacceptable is the way forward. I think calling her a Karen, like you said, you're not going to, but calling her a Karen will not help matters, although very tempting, I imagine. But I can never understand, unless it's a mental illness, why, how someone can actually act like that and not, not even notice they're doing it kind of thing. Like they can berate staff and bring them down and just think that that's totally okay. God, it blows my, it's crazy that is. But now we're gonna go down to the comments to see what we can find. Building Turbulence says, not the arsehole. People really need to be told that treating customer service workers like dirt isn't acceptable. She probably won't take it well from experience, but for fuck's sake, being mean to grocery workers is wrong at any time, let alone in the middle of a pandemic when they're under that much more stress. Ab828 says, not the arsehole. You need to tell her before she goes nuts and someone films her and she goes viral. This behavior is inappropriate, demanding to employees. I would be horrified as you. Chemical Porcupine says, not the arsehole. She needs to know that her behavior is unacceptable. 
Good luck, OP. I suggest posting this on r slash relationship advice if you need help finding the right words and setting. Blanca Loma says, not the arsehole. If you go with her and consistently stand up for the staff, you'll be doing the work of a saint. They are essentially held hostage by people like her. Scenes would be made, but she'll stop asking you to come. And she might even catch on as to why. Not that she will change. Now I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to vote on that poll in the description for story one. And our next story is from Rishes. Am I the arse of a teller my sister? She was asking for it. My 20 male parents just bought a really nice TV for the family room. 65 inch, 4K, OLED, the works. It's awesome. It set our parents back a few thousand pounds. It's intended to be a long term buy. When I finished setting it up, my dad gave a talk about being careful around it, especially to my younger sister, 15. That's because she's really fidgety and her coping mechanism is to have a ball in her hand when she's just sitting down. Occasionally she'd just throw it up in the air and catch it, which none of us really like. A. It's pretty distracting and B. It's a cricket ball, so if she doesn't make the catch, something could break. In fact, that's how our glass coffee table broke. Anyway, my sister had the bright idea to pull the cracked TV prank, where she'd play a video of a cracked screen and it would appear to be broken, on first look. To be fair, she did it pretty well, making noise by dropping the ball on the floor and explaining loudly. My dad rushed in to see what was up, and the first thing he noticed was the seemingly broken TV. He let loose with both barrels, saying she couldn't be trusted and that clearly he was raising an irresponsible moron and how she was disgraceful and inconsiderate. By this time, I'd walked in and noticed that while there was cracks on the screen, there was no shattered glass or anything. I pointed out that it was a video and it was a prank. Dad said it was a horrible joke and my sister started laughing, which annoyed dad even more. But this time, dad just left. My sister started going on how she got my dad by tricking him and how he was out of line for still being angry. I told her that dad was fully justified. She was just asking for trouble and that my sister should apologize. See, while my family are lucky to make this type of purchase, this was a considered purchase and to spend thousands to replace slash fix, it would have been impossible and this would have been my parents' TV for the next decade. Our last TV was bought in 2010. I told her she'd been acting like a dickhead and of course dad would believe she broke it. She had previous of breaking the table and had explicitly told her not to throw the ball around. I also know how upset he was because he's generally a really mellow guy and honestly the last time he raised his voice at us was literally years ago. She says she didn't actually break it so she had nothing to apologise for, which I disagree. Damn man, my first, my first thought is don't let her have a cricket ball to fidget with, even if there's like there's those things, there's fidget balls where it's got loads of different little activities on that people can actually fidget with, made for that purpose. For people with like anxiety and autism and stuff like that. And I'm sure most of you folks know, but just in case some US folks don't know, a cricket ball is really fucking heavy and hard. I mean, you drop that on glass, it will smash, no doubt. But if I was to put myself in the dad's shoes, imagine walking into that room and seeing the screen potentially broken after you just bought it, I think I would be mortified too. Your heart would just literally drop out your ass. It would be absolutely horrible. <laughs> Almost crying thinking about that broken TV. <laughs> so yes, I can't blame the dad for his reaction in that because he told him to at the start to be considerate around it, be careful about it, and then for her to potentially do that. You know, I know it's a prank in the end, but I think for a prank to work, everyone has to be involved in the end kind of thing, you know? just my opinion but let's go to the comments below to see what we can find vance mason says this is why i'm not a fan of the whole youtube slash tiktok prank thing pranks are only funny if everyone involved finds them funny your sister was out of line not the arsehole need us write me out says not the arsehole a prank is only a prank when both sides laugh after the fact in this case she was just mean and asked for your dad to go off on her Hologram J56 says, not the arsehole, until someone knows what it feels like to save for something expensive and make a big purchase and then have it broken, they can't understand the feeling. I will just slap the ball right out of her hand and ground it there for a month. Jackal 1994 says, ball gets slapped into the TV. Ah shit, here we go again. <laughs> ah, now I turn this one to you guys. How would you feel if that happened to you, if you was pranked in this in that situation would you laugh about it would you find it funny let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description and our next story is from sussex beb am i the ass for grounding my daughter for calling out how my girlfriend talks to waiters i 47 recently began dating a woman 33 about a month ago and this week i arranged for her to meet my daughter 12. we ended up going to a restaurant for lunch 
My girlfriend does not particularly like interacting with waiters or waitresses, especially those at more casual dining places. She's had bad experiences with them and feels like they often judge her and other customers on her slash their food choices. She's also sensitive to entitled attitudes on their part. So whenever she goes out with friends or with me, she prefers that someone else place her order for her and does the rest of the interactions with wait staff, handling the paid bill, asking for utensils slash refills, etc. So when it comes to time to order and the waitress is asking my girlfriend what she wants, my girlfriend looks directly at me and I order for her. My girlfriend wants another fork in the middle of our meal and she asks me to ask the waitress for it. This triggers my daughter because the waitress happened to be within earshot and my daughter starts asking my girlfriend why she refuses to acknowledge wait staff. I tell my daughter to be polite but she continues on and says that when the busboy came she could have at least thanked him for taking her soup dish away. She then says they're all freaking human beings and it came out louder than we all expected and diners nearby stared at us. We ended up cutting our meal short because my girlfriend was obviously very offended and I drove home with my daughter. I told her that this is no way to treat a woman who I love and I want to be a part of our lives. I ended up grounding her for embarrassing my girlfriend in front of everybody. Am I the arsehole? My daughter is growing up and needs to learn that not everybody approaches situations how she does and that's ignorant just to write them off as rude or even worse to raise an issue with them about it. Also, I have to add that she claims my girlfriend is so rude and idolises her late mother who would regularly tip 30% yet she is the one who raised her voice in public. I'm kind of torn with this one. In one way, I really want to say like, you're the arsehole. I want to say your girlfriend is the arsehole for the way she treats weight staff. But I know anxiety could play a big part in this one that she might feel anxious talking to weight staff in that. But I think that's something, I don't know if you can learn to get over it or whatever, but it just doesn't sit right with me the way she's treating the staff still. But I may be wrong to do so in this case, but I'm gonna put the anxiety aside this time and say, your girlfriend is just being a little bit snobbish here. I might be totally wrong on that one, but I'll go with that and say, let's commend your daughter for her great manners in the way that she wants to treat wait staff. In a world full of assholes right now, people like that, I, I can only clap for them. I can only clap for them. And the fact that a 12 year old is trying to teach a 33 year old proper dinner table manners <laughs> is concerning. Although there is that whole anxiety thing that I mentioned at the start, so. I don't know. It could go both ways, I guess. But I'm going to say you're the arsehole in this situation. And let's go to the comments below. Sparkly Unicorn Lady says you're the arsehole. It's absolutely understandable that your daughter has some questions slash concerns about why a grown woman refused to talk to servers. What a shitty person to bring into your daughter's life. And after a month of dating. Luckily, it sounds like your daughter's mother raised her right considering your daughter recognises that your girlfriend's behaviour is by no means an appropriate way for adults to behave. Redube Table South says, you're the arsehole, a 12 year old has better manners than your girlfriend, but you're punishing her for it. Your girlfriend needs to grow the hell up or quit eating at restaurants with wait staff. And that's how your girlfriend treats wait staff. I'd be concerned about how she might treat your daughter, other family members or your friends when you're not around. The way people treat those who are lower than them, like waiters, says a lot about who they are. And Judgy Muck Judgy Pants says, you're the arsehole for grounding her. She has a valid point. Remember that people can't read minds, so your girlfriend's behaviour can come off as snobbery, even if unintended on her part. Funny how you're okay with your girlfriend being sensitive to entitled attitudes and yet dismissive of your daughter's feelings, especially since your girlfriend is a recent thing and should not take absolute priority over your daughter. Now I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description. And our next story is from They Should Stop. Am I the arsehole for telling my sister-in-law that a two-month-old baby is ugly? The title makes me sound like an A-grade arsehole, but hear me out. My sister-in-law, husband's brother's wife, has a two-month-old baby. My brother-in-law and sister-in-law have been living with my husband and I since there was some renovation work going on in their house. Yesterday evening, the conversation between sister-in-law and myself went something like this. She said, isn't she just the cutest baby ever? I said, of course. I'm not overly excited at the prospect of a newborn in the house as I have my hands full with a one-year-old who's just learned how to walk and has to be supervised 24-7 by either my husband or me. Sister-in-law says, was, and says my son's name, as cute as her when he was her age. I say, I guess he was. I don't think so. I mean, clearly, and says her baby's name, is way more cute. I said, you know what, you're right. Newborns are almost never cute and all of them look the same. Mine wasn't and yours isn't. <laughs> She took offence at this and told both my husband and hers that I called her baby ugly. 
When I told her that's not what I meant, she told me that it doesn't matter what my words were, I implied that her baby is ugly. Brother-in-law believes her version and wants me to apologise, ASAP, or else he's threatened to leave our house and go and live in a hotel or something. My husband thinks that I shouldn't apologise and that they can leave. I like my husband's idea better. Am I the asshole? Hell no, let them leave, you're going to get your house back. Ah, <laughs> oh, no, but I agree. I mean, babies are cute, but there is a point. I, I, I can't remember what age it is, but whenever I see a baby, it just reminds me of a pug dog. <laughs> Pugs are pretty cute, but just like the squashed up little faces. <laughs> like, which is cute in a way, but still ugly as hell. P.S. Before you before you get on my back, I love dogs, so don't 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 criticize me for that one. <laughs> but let's head straight down to the comments below to see what we can find. Artemisia Slay says, not the arsehole, let them leave. It's not a fucking beauty pageant and people don't <laughs> It's not a fucking beauty pageant and people need to stop commenting on how a baby looks. Oxbridge comma says, not the arsehole. She was trying to demand the compliment and you got sick of it. Also, your brother-in-law has threatened to leave your house that you and your husband are graciously allowing to stay in. Let them leave. Miss Militia says, not the arsehole. I personally think all babies look like potatoes. In all seriousness, every parent thinks their baby is just the cutest thing that ever did exist. It doesn't give them the right to go on and on and insult other children. She needs to chill on pushing her baby as the cutest above all nonsense. And Z Zonish Below said, they all look like Winston Churchill. <laughs> oh God, I'm never going to see that now. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to vote on that poll in the description. And our next story is from Uncle Red has read it. Am I the art of telling my sister's kid they can stay with me if they want and poisoning them against her? Apologies if I get out wrong here. I probably fall in the too old for Reddit category, but my daughter has mentioned this board before. Hiya if you see this, Kath, and I thought it would be a good place to come with a situation. I really fail to see how I'm any kind of arsehole here, but enough folk have said so that maybe I'm missing something. Me and my little sister have never really got on, if I'm honest. I'll admit I was a right toe rag tail away in my youth. And she was a very straight laced and quite conservative. She disapproved a lot of my lifestyle choices and honestly, I just thought she was a bit wet. Our relationship for a long time was basically civil when we have to see each other, but don't make any other effort outside of that. Things changed when she had kids. Her eldest and my middle are the same age and they get on really well. So we kind of put our differences aside for the kids sake. My sister's youngest, 16, recently came out as non-binary. Now I'm an old fart and I won't pretend I fully understand it, although I have been reading and learning. I just know that the kid has asked to be called by a different name and for us to use they and them pronouns and that's easy done in my book. As far as I'm concerned, they're still the same person they've always been. We just call them something different now. Their mum unfortunately doesn't really agree. She absolutely refuses to use they slash them pronouns and uses kids death name all the time and keeps saying that it's just a silly phase. They rang me on FaceTime the other day absolutely beside themselves about it, saying they don't feel safe or comfortable at home anymore and that I'm the only family member who has really been supportive and open to them coming out. I said if that's the case and they feel unwelcome at their mums, I'm more than happy for them to come stay with me. I said they don't have to tolerate their mum misgendering them constantly and that it isn't right for her to do so. I suppose they mentioned it to their mum because she rang me all guns blazing about me encouraging silly childish behaviour and how I shouldn't be going along with their pretend games. She even got our mum and dad and their oldest involved and they all agree with her with dad throwing in comments about how I'm poisoning my sister's kids against her. What I'm asking here is did I say the wrong thing? I don't think I did, but as I say, with my sister and my nephew and my parents all telling me did, I'm starting to second guess myself. Wow, no, they're just all assholes in this situation and you're the only one standing up for this kid and fair play to you, absolutely an amazing person who said themselves doesn't totally understand it, but understands their feelings in the matter. And that's what it's all about. You're an amazing person that's taken the time to learn what you can about it, especially being an old, the older generation and not having grown up with this kind of thing. I think that's, you can't do much more. Fair play to you for offering that. I'd love to know what actually happens after this. Not the asshole in my opinion, but let's go down to the comments below to see what we can find. Erin Skywalker says, not the asshole in a million years. Thank you for being an accepting ray of sunshine and support during this child's life right now. This is when they will need you the most. Please stand your ground, even if it means costing your relationship with your sister. It can save a kid's life. 
some name I can't pronounce says, absolutely not the arsehole, you sound like an absolutely top guy, and they are very lucky to have you as their uncle. Nerd Forest said, not the arsehole, trans kid here, you're going to save your sibling's life, maybe not literally, or maybe literally, but I promise you, giving them a place away from home will make their life. Please don't listen to those who you don't understand, they just want to be understood and live their life. Screaming Harpy says, not the arsehole, fellow old fart in her 50s here. He's been reading and learning too, as two friends have recently announced they are non-binary. They told me how grateful they are that I'm trying my best to fully embrace them and their identities. They told me it validates them and gives them strength against those who refuse to acknowledge their statuses. If it means so much to people in their 30s, I can only imagine how much it means to a 16 year old who feels the world is against them, to know that you love and cherish them for who they truly are. So well done, my fellow old fart. You're a marvelous human being. Absolutely. Now I turn it to you guys. What do you guys think of this story? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to vote on that poll in the description. Once again, guys, thank you for being here today. You are truly, truly appreciated as always. Thank you from the bottom of my heart and I will see you hopefully in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love.